Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Tis I, the Jabbering Magpie, bringing you something a bit new. Well, encountering slight problems on other playthroughs due to the fact uh, the Long Dark has just done a major update which has invalidated all my saves. Which, you know, it's the first one that they've ever done that breaks your save, so I can't hold that against them. And the Darkest Dungeon has just got a massive update, which, to be honest, when you start, you know, playing halfway through a campaign, it gets a bit funky on my game, so I've had to start that again. So I'm not sure if I will start up the Darkest Dungeon again, or we will take a brief pause, but um, for today, I thought I might start this every now and then. This is Xenonauts. It is a rather a hidden gem. Sort of, um, XCOM was taking all of the thunder on the good old beat up the alien strategy game, but this is, uh, it's got a sequel in the work, so I thought I'd give it a go before everything comes out. It's by Goldhawk Interactive, and well worth the money. It's a bit more in depth than the, uh, current XCOM, so it breaches that gap between the old and the new rather nicely. And I do like fiddling around with hideous amounts of minutia. So, um, at the minute, I am playing with the Community Edition, which is uh, basically a bunch of tweaks and fixes and quality of life assurances. That's made by multiple people. I'm also playing with the Law Plus mod by a chap called Pingu the Great, it was published by. And uh, Carl's More Portraits, which is by a chap named Carl. All these may be found on the uh, Steam Workshop section, if you so desire. So, <clears throat> jumping straight into it then. Let's go, new great game. Iron mode on, we're just going to keep it normal. Can't be asked with, we'll just keep briefings on. Let me see. The aliens are somewhat less dangerous than usual. Uh, we'll take it veteran. Go get my bloody ass kicked. Because this seems like the most classic of the settings. And here we have our uh, base placement. Yes, you can stick your base wherever you like. And you can have multiple bases. So, usually... Best place to really cover. I like to initially go for just around here, sort of the southern tip of Italy, because you get the whole of Europe, which is currently, if you look up here, and oh, wonderful, that disappears when you hover off it. If you look at the top right, that gives us good amount of funding. You get a good amount of the Soviet Union in there, which gives us incredible amounts of funding. The Mid East is also covered pretty much once we extend the radar range which for some reason Greece is now in the Middle East which I don't think they're going to be too pleased about uh, so you get that and you've also got North Africa really nicely covered so we could go here no I like to get because the aliens do like fucking up the Atlantic quite a bit, so it's good to get that in there. They do fly around blowing up vessels. Uh, whereas, unfortunately, with the Americas, you get North America, which, yes, is a vast amount of money there, but actually just less than the Soviet Union. And you get Central America, but mm, mm, we're getting four areas here for price of three. Indochina is a bit of a bitch because you're going to need in one base to cover that entirely. So yeah, I think um, down these parts of it, we will be in the beautiful Neapolitan countryside, I think. Or well, let's have a look here. We're on the eastern section of the boots. Yeah, we cover a bit of Greenland that way. And a tiny little bit of Indochina, so we can get them going over, um, I think this is, yeah, Afghan. Got Pakistan there. And this jutting out bitch, which I 
I just said bitch, didn't I? Jutting it out bit. Freudian slip. Which I think is um, northeast of Iran. So yeah, we'll stick it here, I think, in Calabria sort of area. I do believe that's Calabria. Either way, then. Boot. And we will call this Europa Command. There we go. Good as gravy. So we have currently our blue circle. That is our singular radar array. That is what is being covered by what we have. So let's go into our base and start fiddling about with things. So we need we can have a maximum of two more radars to increase our uh, area for $250,000. We're going cheap. Obviously, we're heavily subsidized. We only get $1.5 million in the bank at the minute. So maybe a little bit of um, uh, fiddling around is needed here. So if we put that there, we can put the second one here once this one's built. Sorry, I'm already thinking in future for safe spacing. Uh, I cannot speak today. Space saving measures. We shall need a living quarters as well. Um, another hangar comes in very useful immediately. Another laboratory is quite expensive, but a medical center Again, another must-have, so we shall slip that in here. Can't do that. Fortunately, unlike the original XCOM, one storeroom is enough. And let's have a look at our research. At the minute we have 10 scientists working on why are aliens after us? Or not really why aliens are after us, but where are they coming from? Okay, so that's all our living space and our lab space. So we'll hire them. It's another five scientists who are on the way. We've already just about sliced off a good half a million. Don't have any any engineers. Which is, I'm assuming you're from the Soviet Union from his We build anything you want, comrade. Nothing in storage. This fucking brutal looking motherfucker is our. Uh, guess he's our uh, color sergeant. Can't remember what the other equivalents are. If you do know, do tell me. Um, oh, yes, so. Another thing about this game, whereas XCOM is sort of like, ooh, sexy, semi-futuristic, we've got nanites and other such things. Now, we're in 1979, so the Cold War is raging, and we are in the era of, you know, a fucking Amiga is probably 80% of the world's computing power. So, we've got all the good old-fashioned uh, chaps and chapettes. From like, here we go, we have a West German, Dora Beckers, she's our sergeant. Let's just strip these folks down at the minute. So we have West German, Soviet, so we've got Russell Evans, he's a Canadian. Doop, 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 please excuse the gratuitous clicking, please excuse the gratuitous clicking, getting rid of all this shit because the computer never properly optimizes anything. And usually hands us a big pile of shite. So what do we have? If we go to this screen we can sort people out, so let's try and optimise folks. So it tends to be, for heavy weapons we want somebody with a lot of strength and a lot of time units. Which we have here. Not an incredible amount of accuracy, but a good amount of bravery there as well. So if they do start mucking about, 
then we will be fine but he's sharp shooters in the back and we have here we want for this one Russell Evans time units good amount of HP and strength still not too great on the accuracy but balls to it where are you Russell you can be our breaching expert so yeah these chaps go in front people hide behind them they've got a shield it's lovely what are you incendiary grenade it's always useful to have an incendiary I think and a flash and a smoke grenade so equipment is default there we go so we now have a shield chap got a heavy weapons chap he's still under his carry weight limit so we could probably pop off I don't know could we fit another um... there is a rocket launcher but from my memory a rocket launcher is fucking shite, if you pardon my French. We'll stick you another clip of ammunition. Because the heavy weapons chap does tend to get his ammo chewed through in a matter of minutes. Accuracy, that's what we want. Sniper. And I quite like Frank, we like to roll with two snipers. Uno, Edui. As we've got our eight man team. Yep, sniper, they're fine with one set of grenades each. And medicine. Uh, could you carry medicine without being. No. Balls. It's all right, his strength will go up. Okay, so we've got heavy weapons, we've got our two snipers. And then we will want one chap, maybe, with a shotgun. I might be over specializing here, I don't know. So, who do we have? We tend to want people with a lot of time units and a lot of strength so you can actually get up there and. Oh, you are our lucky boy. And you will be. Am I going blind? Where's. Shotgun. Assault. There we go. So you will be our lucky boy who gets running, screaming and pissing as the enemy uh, charge our positions. That's good. You are over your carry weight, but that's an acceptable amount. We'll be... Actually, you know what? Fuck it. Get rid of the grenade. And you two, we shall put you as... Um, add new role you are what shall be called reserve squad just so I have something that's blank I'm really anal about my fucking squads and I'm like a fussy mother on the first day of school. You know. Have you got your sandwiches? Oh. Right, now that's that done. Now we have got to sort out where they go on our um, battle barge. Well, our helicopter. So we've got a shield bloke in front. Somewhat sensible in my opinion. We can put the two snipers either 
side. Heavy weapons can go behind him, so once they duck, he can just shoot over their heads. Why are you? What's you and why are you a lightning bolt? Oh. Change role, rifleman. Because he's our assault. So sergeant is just a standard issue rifleman. Nothing to be sneezed at there. Okay, thank God we caught that, otherwise that could have been bad. So we can have two chaps on ballistic rifles either side in case there's anybody. We've got these two side doors. Facial cover the flank. Usually one of these doors is facing the edge of the map, but you never know. And we will rename our helicopter the Lucky Magpie. Fly on, you beauty. And I'm just quickly checking that this stupid bug doesn't happen. Sometimes there's a little bug where um, if you take somebody, if you rename your helicopter, take somebody off and then put them you can't put them back on, which is uh, annoying to say the least. So we've got that, let's check the other aircraft. We have two of these, these Condors, which I think are just souped up F-16s. We will name one Red Typhoon. And Blue Thunder. I'll name every aircraft coming out of this base after a colour and then, you know, I've got heavier interceptor aircraft can be weather phenomenon and I don't know. So yeah, we've got the good old massive info dump here, a huge Wikipedia article. Uh, there's also a book which goes along about um, the storyline. You know what, let's have a read of a storyline, it's basically this entire first episode is me faffing about anyway, so um, let's make some more faff. Who de faffa? The Iceland Incident. The 1958 Iceland Incident was our first contact with extraterrestrial life. An alien craft entered our atmosphere above the Atlantic in what we now believe was a scouting mission. It was detected and intercepted by NATO jets operated under the assumption it was an experimental Soviet aircraft. Visual sighting of the UFO rapidly dispelled that myth. The craft was larger than its radar signature suggested, more akin to an airborne warship than an aircraft. Attempts to communicate elicited a barrage of energy weapon fire that disintegrated half of the squadron and left the remaining jets limping back to base with severe damage. Several subsequent attempts were made by NATO fighter squadrons to intercept the alien vessel, costing them a number of aircraft, but inflicting no appreciable damage on the target. When the UFO abruptly changed course and began heading for the eastern coast of the United States, the decision was made to deploy nuclear weapons. Twenty minutes later, half a dozen nuclear-tipped ICBM ignited... Ah, half a dozen nuclear-tipped ICBM ignited the sky above the uninhabited part of Iceland. Oh fucking hell. Well that explains Bjork and why she's so fucking weird. Good singer though. Astonishingly, the UFO survived the blast but it crash landed almost intact shortly afterwards. At this point the NATO forces made the decision to inform the Soviet counterparts about the alien vessel and seek for assistance in securing the vessel and the technology within. Shouldn't we have alerted to the fact that, you know, we were detonating several atomic weapons? You know, surely they had, even in 58, it was, yeah. But uh, they should have had radar to tip them off that uh, ICBMs were being launched. Never mind. The decision was seemingly motivated more by self-preservation than the altruism. The Soviets were furious at the large unexplained nuclear detonations and were apparently close to launching missiles of Rome. Eh, yeah, there we go. A joint ground operation was launched to capture the alien craft, but numerous extraterrestrials had survived the crash and put up stiff resistance. Human forces took significant losses during the operation, but slowly secured the area around the craft. What happened next is uncertain. All we know is that the alien craft was destroyed in an enormous explosion. 
almost certainly caused by the craft's power source. This explosion annihilated the UFO itself and wiped out all ground forces within a 10 mile radius. The only survivors were those at the distant command post. There was none, there was nothing left. The UFO was gone and only a handful of those who had sighted the extraterrestrial were left alive. The aftermath of the incident involved a large scale cover up the official explanation was that of the Soviet invasion of Iceland thwarted by nuclear weapons, with heavy losses on both sides. But behind bl closed doors, these two superpowers were collaborating. A joint Black Op organization was formed, drawing from the resources of both, unofficially dubbed the Xenonauts. It was tasked with defending the planet against alien invasion. The absence of an obvious alien threat had made it look rather irrelevant for the past made us look rather relevant for the past 20 years, Commander, but we have little doubt that we will be needed it someday. It seems that day has come. There we go, that's a little plug about the Free Novella, Xenonauts Crimson Dagger, about the uh, story of the Iceland incident. You get that under your extra button of the games launcher. And it's quite a good little novella. I rather like it. So, yeah, um, for some reason they blamed it on the Soviet invasion where... Um, I would have just said Rogue General or something. Um, here we have all the tatty bow jangles about our various sexy weapons. Well, lack of sexy weapons. We get a Sidewinder, which I think we've got a few years early. What's well, essentially a sexed up Chinook. And, um. Yeah. A sexed up F-16 fighting Falcon. So, um, I think that's everything. Let's go. We have up in the top right our region relationships when we... Oh, hello. Small escort non-altitude 16,000 meters. Heading east speed 1,400 kilometers per hour. Okay, so we will intercept with number one, Blue Thunder, ETA, one minute, uh, one hour, 24 minutes. He is just over the Sahara. Oh, Jesus Christ, it is all kicking off, lads. Oh, shit, it is really kicking off. We don't have enough fighter jets. Um, Jesus. If you look up at the top right there, there's a little thing that says total casualties. That is essentially a sign of how much you are fucking up in the world, because the aliens will run around and do stuff like, hey, there's a fucking baseball tournament. Let's blow it up. Okay, so we've got one here. He is over water, however... Um uh, we have got another alien aircraft. I don't know, what's our current fuel? Combat fuel, 229 seconds. Yeah, fuck it, we'll, we will engage this one even though he's over water. And this is the aircraft engaging menu where you can manually use your fighter. So we've got Red Typhoon here, we've got Light Scout coming up. Control his airspeed, pause with space. Manually fire his weaponry, tell him when to dodge and toss it out. Oh, there's no. Uh, I can't scroll. That's annoying. I don't know what's going on here. So we will go headlong onto the breach, my friends, for commence time. Basic roll. Yes, we got him. Because if you launch both missiles at once with these little buggers, they usually miss because they'll do this barrel roll. Okay, we took no damage, so return to base. Get some bloody fuel down here. We've got UFO number one. It's been intercepted. Again, we will disable the Sidewinder so he doesn't automatically blow his load, so to speak. And now... Dodge! Oh, 
god, we took two shots there. Hull down to 82%. These guys will literally rip your aircraft to shreds. He's still rearming. He's got 9%. How's it looking? Rearming 74%. Red Typhoon has been rearmed. Refueling two hours. Just bucket launch. Engage him. We have 56 seconds of combat fuel. That should be more than enough. Come in, just do the same tactic again. Nothing sexy, nothing fancy, just a pure. Charge, dodge, he got a shot off. Okay, so um, that was two enemy UFOs. One dropped into the med, one just here in the. Um, God, what the hell is this called again? Oh, it's Murmansk there. The Arctic Sea, let's just call it. And we have a chap who is sort of just happily sitting around Africa. On the border of Egypt and Sudan, possibly. So, next episode, we will go do a ground mission. So that's three UFOs to us, zero to the enemy. Although we have taken a little bit of damage on our fighters, which will take a while to repair. These are not quick things, so if we have another quick scramble, we are buggered. Right, I do hope you enjoyed that, ladies and gentlemen. I know I certainly did. Please do come drop by again and catch us uh, taking the fight to the old uh, Xeno Menace. Tatty bye!